This episode of Lost and Nicky Presents has been brought to you by Zigrit.com. Hello there, folks, and welcome to our first ever Film Fights. Today we're going to be talking about Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, versus Star Wars Episode 6, Return of the Jedi. We got Darth Forge representing Episode 3, and Jesse the Predator will be representing Return of the Jedi. That being said, let's get ready to rumble! First off, you might be wondering why I chose Return of the Jedi, not Empire Strikes Back, which is arguably a better movie. Reason for that is because Empire, yes, arguably better, but Jedi can still beat the shit out of Revenge of the Sith. Oh yeah! Not so fast, Predator. What the fuck? The best film of the Star Wars saga is not Return of the Jedi. I'll give you a hint as to what it is. Not from a Jedi. A few years ago, if you said it was your favorite Star Wars movie, everybody would be fine with it and leave you alone. But now if you say it's your favorite, everybody wants to fucking crucify you on a cross of fire. It's a trap! Give up? It's Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. No! Revenge of the Sith is a modern, well act Shakespearean. With great performances, memorable characters, a fantastic ending, and quite possibly one of the greatest scores in film history. It's one of the greatest films of all time. This is why I'm a strong believer of legalized bullies. And I'm going to tell you why. I have a dollar for every time that has happened. Okay, so not only are you going to say it's better than Jedi, you're going to say it's the best of all time, one of the best movies of all time? No, 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 go past this, past this part. No, oh, Spaceballs will beat the shit out of that. Come on. In fact, never play this again. Revenge of the Sith cannot even hold a candle to Return of the Jedi. It's just not even on the same level. The acting's horrible, the characters are barely watchable and not even entertaining with no personality and... Yeah, dude. Alright, good luck with this one. Good luck. I guess it's time for a film fight, as we'll measure up Revenge of the Sith against Return of the Jedi. Release the gun. The first category that we'll be debating which is better in would be the cast and actors. Oh, so you're gonna start with your lowest cards here, you're starting with actors. This is by far your worst suit, so play away. No, Predator, I'm actually dead serious. The actors in the prequels get a lot of unnecessary hate, and I honestly really don't know why. No, 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 no. Every bit of hatred is definitely warranted. I wouldn't doubt it if half the actors on there don't even put it on their resume. Hayden Christensen's performance as Anakin Skywalker was actually really good in Episode 2. It wasn't an Academy Award winning performance, but it was an A-minus performance at least, portraying a certain amount of angst and a torment, menace. Cockiness and heartbreak. What the fuck is this? Revenge of the Sith, Aiden Christensen constantly seems to have this look of fear and anxiety and inner torment throughout the movie. His speech is shaky, he has this tearful look in his eyes, it's really done quite well. The best scenes in the movie are the ones where there aren't any dialogue, where he just has to rely on his facial expressions. His facial expressions make him a great actor in my opinion, and if you don't see it in the prequels, go watch Shattered Glass, or Awake, or Life as a House. His performances in those movies were great, too. Oh, I find it slightly puzzling the fact that you don't mention Jumper. He was great in that, wasn't he? My favorite scene in the whole movie of Hayden Christensen's acting would probably be on Mustafar. He has to betray a wide variety of emotion. Rage, fear, anxiety, and he does it all fantastically. His speech is shaky, he has this menacing, almost demonic look in his eyes. It's fantastic. Whoa. Hayden Christensen gets the Darth Ford seal of approval in this movie. Well, that being said, I made a little Hayden Christensen horrible montage because I couldn't find one on YouTube, so I had to make one myself. Here's, here, here's your praise of Hayden Christensen. Here you go, check this out. Who was that all about? Well, R2 has been a little swine joke. He's trying. I didn't say anything. My powers have doubled since the last time I met Count. Oh, 
all because of your friend. That's because today you are. You deserve your glorious day. Alright, you only want an opportunity to skin for the kind of time or weevils. Spare parts. Christensen is complemented by fantastic performances from his supporting cast, including Ewan McGregor, who does a great job showing the I want a fucking hit. proud and happy sort of father figure watching his son and going off and succeeding in the world. I don't know, that kind of sounds like Jambla, you know, the... Jedi Man Boy Love Association. The Mambla Rest Area and Dino Zone. Yeah, Jambla. Much like Caden Christensen, Natalie Portman also had a incredible performance and was incredibly underappreciated by the fan base. Much also like Caden, she also had to display a wide array of emotions. Fear, sadness, anxiety, hope. And finally, like Caden Christensen, her performance in the Mustafar scene is mind-blowing. This has been a character that has been very, very emotionally stable in all the other movies. So to see her emotionally fall apart to the point where she's crying and flat out telling Anakin that she's going down a pa path that he's not following is really, really emotionally heart-wrenching to see. I cry almost every time. Well, Darth, on the Natalie Portman side, I can slightly agree with you because... No, her acting wasn't good. No, 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 no. The only thing that was good about her between all three of the prequels was her rack in Episode 2. You can almost see a little nipple in there. But aside from that, nah, dude. And especially the scene that you're so incaptivated with, her acting was horrible. I mean, you're breaking my heart. But no, it was horrible. Horrible, horrible. The only thing good about her throughout all three were her boobs. And then there's Ian McDermott, but you've already pretty much covered that. Now, surprisingly, I don't really have anything that bad to say about the actors in The Return of the Jedi. Well, there's a reason you can't talk any shit on Return of the Jedi's acting, because it's good when Luke has to confront Vader and something, something, something dark side. Something, something, something complete. 
you know, strike him down. Ah, like the Emperor, everybody's fucking good in Return of the Jedi. From Lando to fucking Admiral Akbar. It's, it's a trap! It's a trap! Also, who's Cat? Like, come on, everything is fucking good about Return of the Jedi. Hands down, acting, character wise, everything about Return of the Jedi beats the shit out of Revenge of the Sith. We have no leg to stand on here. If it was a 1 out of 10, you get like a 2, we get an 8 or a 9 or a 10. Cause I'm bad, Moses! No, it really does piss me off how everybody's freaking out about the changes in the original trilogy like they have completely different movies. Oh yeah, I can't enjoy Return of the Jedi because they made one little change! Fucking fanboys, it's time for you to grow up! We're pretty much on the same side here, I'm not totally... I'm not a hater of the, uh, the special editions. They're all right. With that finished, it's time to move on to our second part of our debate. That being the story. Now it's my turn to laugh. Whatever. Honestly, unlike the cast between Revenge of the Sith and Return of the Jedi, there is no comparison between the story of Revenge of the Sith and Return of the Jedi. What the fuck are you talking about? Revenge of the Sith is just so much better. Episode 3 tells the truly tragic story of a good man falling down a horrible path out of compassion and love, right when he's starting to get the respect and compassion that he deserves. There are many situations in the film where Anakin really is in a position where he's damned if he does or damned if he doesn't. The fact of the matter is that the problems that the characters face in Revenge of the Sith are a whole lot deeper. In the original trilogy and Return of the Jedi, the problems pretty much boil down to Darth Vader's Luke's father, they need to stop the Empire, they need to blow up another Death Star. But in Revenge of the Sith, as well as the other prequels, Anakin and all the other characters have a multitude of other problems. The dark side of the Force is a pathway to many abilities some consider to be unnatural. Everyone's trying to give Anakin more independence in this version than they did in Episode 2. Anakin's trying to save his wife, while at the same time remain loyal to the Jedi and his morals, and Padme is just trying to reassure Anakin that everything's fine, that he's simply overreacting. Dear Diary, mood apathetic. It boils down to this. The story of Return of the Jedi is our food. It's a good story, but nothing anything really special. The story of Revenge of the Sith, on the other hand, is Shakespearean. We finally get to see characters develop like we've never seen them before. We get to see major events in the Star Wars universe unfold. Besides the destruction of the Empire, I know that happened in Return of the Jedi, but anyway. It just felt like a more important story, one that needed to be told a whole lot more than any of the movies in the original trilogy. That's what life is, a series of down endings. All, all Jedi had was a bunch of Muppets. Now time for my story rebuttal here. For one, you're calling it Arthurian, right? Which goes back to King Arthur, blah, blah, blah. I can see how you see some similarities, being lightsaber, being sort of Excalibur, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> But it's more, more of a, uh, of a mythological story. Bartons, what is your profession? Zeus taking on the Titans and overthrowing them to restore balance. Been told before, you know of the mighty Titan Kronos. So fearful was Kronos of the Oracle's prediction that his own children would rise against him, that he decided to imprison them all in his belly. Rhea stood by and watched as her children were devoured one by one. But when the time came for the last of her children to be eaten, she was unable to bear another such loss and devised a trick to save the baby Zeus. It was I who cared for him. But my foolish act of compassion would haunt the Titans forever. For in sparing Zeus, we allowed him to return to us with vengeance in his heart. He betrayed all of the Titans for the sins of just one. The sins of his father, Cronus. A little bit closer than that. So now we're 0 for 2 on your side. I don't know what you got coming up, but I don't see any way in hell you're going to win. Excellent. And now we finally get to the third category. The action. The lightsaber battles, the whole nine yards. 
I will say that the action of Return of the Jedi is very underappreciated, and it is rather good for the time. Oh yeah! It's not a comparison to put it up against Revenge of the Sith. Revenge of the Sith begins with a spectacular, heart-pounding aerial chase scene. Very familiar of the dogfights that we'd see in World War II style combat. It's kind of like the movie Pearl Harbor, only less Ben Affleck and less sucking. Pearl Harbor sucks. Oh, I love that comparison to Pearl Harbor. You're, you're kind of helping me do my work for me now, aren't you? Oh, yeah. The film has five, count them, five lightsaber battles, and two of them are actually surprisingly more meaningful than you would expect. The first one is the one that is rather unsung by a lot of Star Wars fans, and that's the fight between Palpatine and Mace Windu. In the name of the Galactic Senate of the Republic, you are under arrest, Chancellor. You really see the rage in Samuel L. Jackson's face as he goes up against Emperor Palpatine, and it's very arguable that Mace Windu himself was turning to the dark side in this fight scene as he saw his Jedi brethren get slaughtered. Holy shit, we're actually on an agreement on something. Really? I have no problem with Samuel L. Jackson in this movie. He's actually probably one of the few people in this movie that you can't bitch about whatsoever, so... Okay, Sam L. Jackson, one point for you, but that's... That's your only point. Keep trying. When Anakin finally shows up and sees Windu pointing a lightsaber at Palpatine's neck, it leads to a very suspenseful, very heart-racing scene. We have Emperor Palpatine, possibly the most evil figure in all of the Star Wars universe, with... I know why I am not forgotten. The possible exception of Darth Bane, Mace Windu, who's going to kill Emperor Palpatine without trial, which is a clear violation of a Jedi code, and then we have Anakin stuck in the middle. It's a fantastic scene, and one of my favorite scenes of all time. I need him! Since we've already seen in depth how horrible Anakin was in this movie, or Hayden Christensen, which, whichever you want to call him by. I'm not the Jedi I should be. You know the dark side. What did you say? What have I done? And finally, we have Obi-Wan vs. Anakin. The greatest cinematic fight sequence in history. This fight scene took months to choreograph, and let me tell you, it pays off on both an entertaining and emotional level. If you're not with me, then you're my enemy. Most of the time when I see fight scenes, I'm really looking for nothing more than just some eye candy, but this is actually painful to watch, and I mean that in the best possible way. The expressions on Hayden Christensen and Ewan McGregor's face as they're forced to kill their best friend is really, really hard to watch. Done against a spectacularly done Mustafa background with lava pouring everywhere, obviously symbolizing hell. fast-paced, climactic, emotionally devastating, and Obi-Wan's speech to Anakin at the end is pr quite possibly one of my all-time favorite moments in cinema, able to bring even a hardened Sith Lord like myself to tears. You were the chosen one! It was said that you would destroy the Sith, not join them! Bring balance to the Force! Not leave it in darkness! No, those tears are because you're falling so far behind, but you came up in the books here, there was a lot of good action in episode 3. That's one of its few redeeming qualities was the action, because the acting was crap, the characters were crap, and the uh, story was okay, but it still kind of lets you down because it could have been better. They did try a little bit on the special editions to increase the scale of Return of the Jedi, because the scale obviously seemed a lot bigger on uh, Revenge of the Sith, because there was a lot more shit going on, a lot more planets, a little bit more galactic. However, in the special editions, they did show that they did show that it was a larger scale. They even showed Coruscant and blah blah blah. You know, it was on a huge fucking scale. Jedi even was on a scale, but they wasn't shown, so you got you gained a little bit of traction. But all in all, of our three categories, I'll even give this one in your favor on the action side. I'll give you this, give give it to you. But you're still out two to three. And I hate to break it to you, but Jedi is our one, uh, it's our winner. 
So therefore, by default, Empire Strikes Back is better, but Jedi is our winner. Final verdict. So, that's the end of our debate. Feel free to post a comment on which film you think is better, Return of the Jedi or Revenge of the Sith. Or feel free to send us suggestions for future film fights where we can debate which film is better. Brand new issue of Lost Anarchy Magazine is now currently available throughout the city. And we are now a paid publication. You can check out Scottish Ninjas, Happy Face Killer, Deadliest Warrior, Feral Kellner's Faro, Main and Muzio's Vessel, Fanboy Flicks, and Darth Forge's article. And much, much more for only $2.50 at Comic market.com where you can order it online or if you can catch up with Mojo El Diablo and his crew at the San Diego Comic Con this year they will also have issues available with them thank you for watching don't forget to like and subscribe or I will scratch your eyeballs out this episode has been brought to you by ziggret.com there's nothing fake about it we're the source for electronic cigarettes Welcome to the 21st century. Quit smoking and start vaping. No tar, no secondhand smoke, no pollution, no offensive odors. Smoke without the guilt. We carry everything from egos to traditional electric cigarettes and a full line of accessories. So please come on down to ziggred.com. All of our flavors are produced right here in the United States. And we can even say our flavors are kosher. So for the best flavors, the best vaping experience that you can get, go to ziggred.com. And remember, all the flavor you will get vaping on your cigarette. At ziggret.com. That's Z-I-G-R-E-T dot com.